questions tonight and conflicting statements in audio recordings from the NOPD's investigation into a former member of Mayor Cantrell's security team. The NOPD reassigned officer Jeffrey Vappi and launched an internal investigation into his timesheets amid a series of Fox 8 reports. And now records show someone within City Hall tried to get Vappi put back on Cantrell's security detail before he was even interviewed by NOPD investigators. Here's our new outside the office investigation. Let's talk about your duties while you were with the mayor. For hours. How did you know that automatically that was a 16 hour day? Who's your person like in charge? Over several weeks. Did you ever have to do anything related to protection with the husband or the daughter? Investigators for the NOPD's Public Integrity Bureau interviewed at least five current or former members of Mayor Cantrell's security detail as they investigated the timesheets of former security team member Jeffrey Vappi. How did you get to the handle board? Do you have a key to the apartment? The investigation started after Fox 8 revealed Vappi spent long hours both on and off the clock inside a city-owned Upper Pantaba apartment with Mayor Cantrell. But in those in-depth interviews, some of the officers gave conflicting information about the inner workings of the detail team. For example, we found many instances of Vappi entering the door that leads to the Upper Pantaba apartment using a key. But listen to how he answered this question. Do you have a key to the apartment? The portable? No. Does any members of the executive protection team have a key to the portable? Uh, I'm not. I don't know. The discrepancies don't stop there. Taxpayers paid Vapi to provide protection for Mayor Cantrell on more trips than any other member of her security team. Prior to Vapi joining the mayor's executive protection team, no officer ever traveled with the mayor. When asked why, more conflicting answers. At all. At some point, y'all started traveling. Can you tell me when did that happen? Do you remember? I don't remember offhand, um, I, but I know it was, it was definitely after. There was two threats to uh, towards the mayor. It was two white guys that threatened, two separate ones. But uh, and I think like around that time. Like right out some somewhere around there, that's when uh, when was that do you remember? I don't remember. Meantime, Deputy Charles Ellis never mentioned a threat. Experts say if a true threat existed against the mayor, all of her security team should have been made aware. Uh the mayor didn't start traveling until Vappy came on. Okay. Talk to right. me about that. Only thing I can tell you is once he came on, we were told and we were told by the mayor's scheduler, Katrina Simmons, that, hey guys, y'all gonna start traveling with the mayor. So I was like, oh, where did this come from? Because we ain't hear this from the mayor, you know? She said, the mayor told me she's gonna start taking security on the trips with her. I was like, oh, okay. So I started preparing my stuff, get my luggage, because I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna be in rotation, you know? Right. Get my luggage, get my passport, and you know, so I can be ready. And uh, never got caught upon. And the hours officers clocked while the mayor was traveling also didn't add up. Here's how former head of the security team, Wandell Smith, described the schedule when Cantrell was out of town. So I know when you talked about Miss Landrew mm -hmm. and uh, Mayor Cantrell, you said y'all never traveled with her. Right. When the mayor was out of town, mm -hmm. not here, away mm -hmm. from the city, and you guys didn't travel, right? how many hours did y'all work there? Basic hours, 8 hours and 35 minutes. No. Was there ever a time where you worked 12 hours? No, no, no reason to. Yet after Smith left the team, many security members regularly clocked 12 hours, even with the mayor out of town. Meantime, Vappi said in this interview he didn't clock long days unless he was with the mayor on a trip. If there was a time that your payroll mm -hmm. was over 16 hours and 35 minutes mm -hmm. entered, okay. you were trapped. Yes. If there was a time that your payroll Mm -hmm. was over 16 hours and 35 minutes and you were not traveling would that payroll be accurate or incorrect that'd be incorrect so you would never have you should never have been paid for anything over 12 hours when you were not traveling correct that doesn't appear to be true. For example, in September of 2021, every day that Vappi worked except for one, he clocked 12 hours or more. On one day, he billed taxpayers for 17 hours, the next 22. 
The mayor wasn't traveling either of those days. In fact, on the day he clocked 17 hours, September 19th, Cantrell's schedule doesn't have a single thing on it, only listing all day New Orleans. Video from a public security camera showed Vappi spent long hours in the apartment, exercising with the mayor, watering the plants, or even changing clothes. So I would uh, show up at the Pentabla, mm -hmm. dressed to walk. We would go walking, then after that, I would uh, go, had access to go to the Pentabla, change my clothes, and then go to work. From the Pentabla? From the Pentabla. And you would change your clothes at the Pentabla? That's correct. In the same house with your principal? Different places inside. That's what I asked you. In the same house with your principal? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. So you would go, and, and you telling me now that's something that they taught you in training too? It has nothing to do with training. Anymore. What does it have to do with? Tell me how did you feel like that? I didn't, I didn't feel anyway. That was, this was a privilege, or this was a... a the boss. Did you ever do that with Mayor Negan? No, I didn't do it. Did you ever go inside of any apartment or any place that Mayor Negan was at and change clothes? No. Okay, so. Well. No. For the No, for the uh, mayor's ball. For the mayor's ball, myself and the other guys changed in the Pentabla. You see what that looks like, man? Uh, but most of the others said even entering the apartment was unusual and that the amount of time Vappi spent inside embarrassed them and tainted the office they've dedicated their lives to. Has it ever been a time that you went to the Batavo apartment when you were not at work? Hell no. I didn't hear you. No. Okay. No, what did you say? I, didn't... I said hell no. So me and my family get phone calls. You know, man, what's going on? Just that bus. I don't know what the hell is going on. You know, I know just as much as you know by the news, you know. But when you tagged alone like that, that's a stain. Right. You know? So that, that out of all this, this saga, this, this BS, that's what really ticked me off, man, you know. So do you feel like his actions embarrassed the, embarrassed the unit? Uh, I would say so, yeah. Mm -hmm. You feel like he crossed that line of professionalism with his protection duties? The way it looks? Yeah. Look bad. The timing of the interviews raises even more questions. The consent decree monitor said in a public meeting right before Sean Ferguson retired in late December, someone in City Hall tried to reinstate Vappi to the mayor's executive protection team. But to the specific question, uh, the answer is yes. There was an effort to put Officer Vappi back on the mayor's executive protection team prior to the completion of the PIB investigation. When the monitoring team found out about it, we reached out to multiple members of the NOPD um, leadership team who quickly and effectively quashed that effort. But the audio tapes reveal that attempted reinstatement came before most of the interviews in the investigation had been conducted. Here's how it looks on a calendar. According to sources and the consent decree monitor, someone in City Hall tried to get Vappi reinstated to the executive protection team on December 22nd. The Public Integrity Bureau didn't interview Vappi's co-workers, Officer Robert Monlin and Deputy Charles Ellis, until six days later on December 28th. Vappi's first interview didn't take place until January 9th, a timeline that raises more questions about these audio recordings and the time spent outside the office.